Sam, you hungry? Followed me home one day. Got stuck between the, the tread of my tire. And I uh, drove home that way. Felt like a little bump all the way home. Got home and I wedged it out. And it was a damn turtle. What the hell? Damn turtle. So now she lives in my bathtub. The emotion. Oh, so you go camping or go hiking or go exploring or go plinking or something like that. You just, there you go. So it's still doing okay. Got a little shine going. Those of you that are trying to keep up with this, here we go. So it gets you up to date. So. <laughs> Okay, so we removed the back tire and the spare tire mount and the license plate light cover. We removed all that. We're gonna wet sand this real quick. And we're going to put our blue uh, pinstriping across the top. And then we're gonna clear it again. So sand it. And here I just scratched the hell out of this, taking this off. So I'll touch that up and clean this up real good. And then we'll uh, get the blue line on there, get it cleared and put it back together, okay? Okay, and there you got it. So put it back together now. We got our blue stripe on there, or pin striping rather. So that's on. And we put a little bit of clear on it, a little bit more. And now we're gonna throw this tire back up, put our license plate light uh, cover back on, and we should be done back here. All right, what's going on here is when I was uh, about to mount the uh, spare tire back on, a couple of those lugs that we mount the spare tire to, uh, the welds had became old and broken and brittle. So I'm having to re-weld a couple of those. But what uh, this is a, a good time to point out that because we run these larger tires and our standard spare tire mount doesn't really work what did we do or for what we got, especially these larger tires. So basically what we do is we take the big ass tire, we'll take that big tire, pretty much set it on this bumper and that allows us to position this plate. Then we make this plate and we drill the holes where the existing mounting bolts were at, and then we mount it to that, okay? And then we add this plate, we drill holes into the plate, we elevate and uh, position our mounting holes, and from the back we just put studs or bolts through the back of it, and we weld them on there. And this one right here, you can see is just about ready to go. So we're gonna hit that with a couple of quick welds, make sure that uh, nothing rattles and moves and works it way loose going down the trail. All right, but that's how we do that, okay? All right, so let's talk about this light real quick, okay? I don't think that these are even available on Amazon anymore. Um, but this is the 42 inch light bar. It's a curved light bar, 42 inches long. Fits perfect as you can see with our trackers and our sidekicks and such. So, but kind of a pain in the ass to mount because you gotta cut this out right here. This is part of this rubber thing. You gotta cut that out right there and mount it. And then what you do is you come through here. So you're gonna have to cut this and cut this. And this right here, um, I had forgotten all about this, uh, but when we went to to jam this, I took out this part right here, which goes up there, so, and it uh, revealed that I had forgotten all about that, but that's how they're mounted, is right through there, and they mount perfectly. So, that's how it's done. So, you need to consider that if you're thinking about getting one of these. But then, let's say you had a, oh, maybe you had a roof rack or something like that. You could also mount this on a roof rack. So, if you can even find these anymore, I think they're going to, uh, a single roll of lights seems to be coming up so and then another thing here what's different on here you, you see here that we put this trim on it seems to be working pretty good but what I failed to mention on this one is that I've also modified these fender wells and you can see here how much I've cut from these fenders 
to make these tires work and to make the stance look right and look good. So, but I'm cut all the way up to this right here, to this body mold right here, this mark, this body contour, and the same back here. I'm right there just below that line as well. And that's how much fender we have cut out on these. So when you see this going down the road, it doesn't have any bigger lift than a two inch puck and a two inch body lift. It's just, you know, four or five inches in total. But because the fender wells have been cut out and expanded, it gives me more travel space when I get into some of those awkward positions. And I need the vehicle to articulate as much as it possibly can without these big old tires ripping my body panels off. Because they will, they'll grab it. There's several pictures that you've seen before I cut this that um, this back tires are, are up in here and they're touching the, the body right here. And you don't want that. So over the years, I trim a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more until I got to this point right here. So anyway, I wanted to point that out as well. All right, now the interior is uh, it's still a mess. I haven't got to it. I might do some a little bit on it this evening. Uh, I want to get the pressure washer out and um, clean up. Uh, you can see in the fender wells over here. I've got a plan for that. I'm not doing that. So I'm going to get pressure washer and then clean all that up. And back in here, see all this right here. So I got an idea for that. And then we'll clean all this stuff up. So. All right, so that should give me a cleaner surface that I'll be able to work with. So we'll try that. Okay. Okay, so we remember this. We had to modify the fenders and stuff. Well, that was fine, you know, uh, eight, nine, ten years ago when you could buy these things for, you know, under $1,000 running. And... Um, you could beat the hell out of them, and, and uh, if they were dead, they were dead. That was it. You know, wherever they stopped that is where you left them at. But nowadays, these are getting harder and harder to find, and uh, people are collecting them a lot more. So we probably need to take a little bit better care of these things. So what we're going to do is, is I'm going to block this up. I don't want uh, any mud or water, or I want to lose any air conditioning or heat or any of that kind of stuff, and uh, keep a lot of the dirt and dust out of this thing as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make me a, a uh, maybe a fiberglass um, patch. Yeah, maybe a patch or fender liner or something, whatever you want to call it. But basically, I'm going to prevent a lot of the water, dirt, and dust from coming in the vehicle. And this is how we're going to do it. So I've already cut out some fiberglass mesh. And now I'm going to mix up some resin. And we're going to apply a few coats of resin on that. And see if that'll help you know keep the scene a little bit more watertight and take care of it a little bit more so that's what we're going to do now okay so i will get right back to you put this glass in so we're going to do that next okay so here this side is drying with the first coat of the fiberglass in there okay so you can see that and then this side here is what it's going to look like Okay, this side's already done. That's all it takes. Save a little bit of water from getting in here, dirt, mud, dust, all that kind of crap. So we'll do that. So we'll put another coat on here, spread this all out, hit it with some paint, and then we're done. Okay? All right, guys. So those inserts right there got all done and patched up with this uh, fiberglass resin. And this is the stuff that I use right here. Basically, it's pretty simple. Read the instructions on it. Get you a tub like this and uh, you know, mix your droplets in there. Be careful not to put too much in, uh, especially if it's hot like it is here, because it's gonna set up really, really quick and you're not gonna be able to work it. And then if you use a paintbrush, which is actually the best thing to do, um, you better buy you some cheap ass paint brushes because you're gonna be throwing them away. They're no good after you get done. So um, consider that. I've actually used these to mix it, these little handheld spatulas. I've even used this. This is a Bondo spreader, body filler spreader. I've used these kind of things as well, get them up in there. But it's actually pretty simple. There's tons of videos on YouTube on how to do it. Uh, I've been doing this since I was a kid, so uh, I, I kind of got this down. But I realize a lot of people may maybe never used fiberglass before, but it's, it's pretty easy. It's pretty cut forth. So anyway, that's all. All right, guys, here we go. So 
Uh, remember this one didn't have the shocks. We pulled the shocks off and used them for something else somewhere else. But here's the shocks. The shocks finally come in. We're gonna throw some shocks on it. And you remember this thing has no shocks on it. That's why I can just bounce it up and down. No shocks on it. So uh, we're gonna put some shocks on it. But I wanted to, I really actually wanted to do almost a whole video on uh, shocks and struts. But uh, unfortunately, uh, Arizona's in a grip of a, of a heat wave thing. And uh, out where I live is, uh, you know, 117, 18 degrees. We're breaking records left and right, that kind of stuff. And, you know, everything we do here on this channel, we try to do for the, the regular guy, the guy that just has a garage or a carport or a driveway or something with, you know, limited tools and limited access, you know. He may not have an air compressor. He may not have a lot of power tools and stuff, but he's got some hand tools and he still wants to tinker uh, on these little vehicles. And, and not just a tractor, it could be anything. It could be a hot rod car, it could be a motorcycle, it could be a boat, you know, whatever. So that's why how we do everything. But unfortunately, at my advanced age, uh, this heat <laughs> kicks my ass, even though I'm from here and, and I'm used to this kind of stuff. If I don't have to be out in this heat, I'm not going to. So anyway, so the point of that is, is that we want to talk about shocks and we want to talk about struts and we want to talk a little bit about suspensions. Okay. So the last one that we did was a, a 94. Remember the tan 94 uh, removable hard top uh, that we did. Uh, it had a Calmini system on it and those kind of things. So that's an aftermarket suspension. That suspension is about a grand. It gives you three inches of lift, but it gives you a lot more articulation, much larger springs. Uh, and it has longer struts and longer um, uh, uh, shocks that go with that. So, um, so, so that's important. Now, this vehicle that we're working on here, this 8910 top, this one has a two inch budget uh, uh, lift. That's the little plexic on top of the coil springs. It has its original coil springs. Uh, I would love to find some uh, springs off of the four door. They're, they're about an inch, uh, inch and a half, uh, inch and three quarters longer you know, depending on how they've been beaten up. And uh, I would like to put those on here, but uh, until that point, uh, I don't have them. So this one has the body lift and a two inch suspension lift, okay? So that gives me four inches. Well, here's the deal. With that, what happens is that my struts and my um, shocks, they need to be able to travel longer. I, I have a longer travel on my suspension now. So I don't want to put stock uh, struts and, or stock shocks on here. Now, on your, your budget body lift kit, if you have sh uh, stock struts, there's a puck that goes on top of those, so that will extend that travel, so you won't really lose too much on that. But in the back, they really don't have anything for it. You really need to get longer shocks, or shocks that will extend, you know, to compensate for that additional two inches. So if you have a, a, a suspension lift, even the budget one on here, you don't wanna put stock shocks on here. So don't just look up, you know, shocks for your, your geo tracker, your sidekick, your Vitara, or whatever, because that's not going to work for you, and you're just not going to get the most out of your suspension because it's going to be limited, limited by the travel of a stock shock. So, that was a mouthful. So, what I've done is I, I obtained a um, a chart, a chart that tells me about all the products that uh, Monroe makes. That these are actually, yeah, there we go, Monroe's. So. These are Monroe. So I went and I got a, a, a list of specifications for their shocks. And I went through and I wanted to find a shock that was a bigger and stronger, and most importantly, that had a, an extension that was longer than the stock uh, extension. So a stock extension on one of these is 17, 18 inches on a stock geo tracker. Well, if you add two to that, well, now you're probably at 19 or 20 inches. So what these are, these are actually a 22 inch uh, travel on it, but they're much thicker and uh, they're, they're a different part number. They're actually for a uh, Ford pickup, I believe, the rear end of a Ford pickup. So that's heavier duty right there. So that's going to help me out on the trails knowing that I have a heavier duty suspension. So that's why I chose these. So um, I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just telling you that this is what I have done uh, with this. So these right here, uh, are the shocks that I'm going to throw on today and we're going to stop this uh, this little 8910 top from you know bouncing up and down in the back and then what I want to point out is what's not on this video is that my struts on this one are off of a Pontiac Grand Am so the front struts that I use 
on this 8910 top are from a 89 Pontiac, I'm sorry, from Pontiac Grand Am is what they're from. And because they are longer and thicker and heavier duty for a heavier vehicle, I had to remove the puck that I had for my two inch body lift because I don't need that anymore because I have the same travel um, that I had before without them. So it's bigger, it's thicker, it's stronger, it handles a heavier weight. So the rear suspension is getting shocks off of a F, uh, you know, Ford F-150 pickup and the struts off of this thing are coming off of a Pontiac Grand Am that I got. So um, if you want part numbers for these or anything like that, or you know, there's an email on this channel, there's an email that you can just send me an email if you've got a question or something. I check that email every day, uh, sometimes several times a day, and just ask me and I'll find you part numbers and what I did with them. Or if there's something that's not really covered in this, these videos that you wanna see, leave it in the comments. And I'm, I'm happy to, to try to get an answer to you as best I can. So right now it's, uh, you know, it's like 117 degrees and uh, the sun is beating off my bald head and I need to crawl up under here and mount these shocks. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Okay, cool. All right, they're up in there. Uh, and you can see I still got this, the uh, restraints on them. Uh, you wanna put them in with those restraints on there and uh, you got them into position first. And I would at least get the bottom bolt in first um, and just line up that that top stud on the top of your shock uh, through the alignment hole there, which is what we've done. And you can see we've got the washer and the rubber spacer pushing up there on top on. Yeah, it's the same on this side. So right up there. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'm going to go up on top and I'm going to at least put um, a nut up on top. I don't want this coming back out once I cut these and release the restraints and then the shocks are going to go. And then it's going to be pretty tight up in here. These are brand new shocks for a, you know, a Ford pickup truck. So they're going to be pretty stout. So anyway, on to the next step. There you go. So the top's all in there mounted, bolted. And the, uh, the restraints have been cut off. You see them on the ground. The restraints right there, right there, right there. So on that side, that's all done as well. Okay. So we'll see what happens.